Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? So, <laughs> this last time it would have, uh, we didn't really film us finishing the fence or anything like that. It would have been really, really tedious and boring. But um, we're going to show you exactly how we went around and actually attached it and re-salvaged this fence and everything like that. It was, uh, it was definitely a tedious process and it took a few days, but got we, got it done. It, we got it done and mended all the chewed up mangled mess and everything else like that. It doesn't look pretty or anything like that, but it looks pretty good. pretty to me. I think it's pretty. It's, it's good. Hey it's man, it was work. a free fence. Free. Yes. Zero dollars. Yes. <laughs> And, so lots uh, of hard work and sweat. Whether or not it kept the dog out, that's uh, a big old fat negative on that. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. No. So our boxer, <laughs> our boxer can jump a six foot wooden fence. There's All nothing right. around the perimeter that she could be climbing up on because we've moved everything. There's nothing around the perimeter. We've checked and double checked. There's no holes in the fence, nothing. The only thing that we can think of is that... She's hopping this five foot fence over here. Yeah. And I'm gonna extend that a little bit, but that's the only other way that I can think of it, but um, I hope that that's the spot. Hope, I mean, we'll only, we'll try it. And then if she doesn't start getting out anymore, then that's the answer. Yeah. And then if she does keep getting out, well then, but she's a sweet dog, and so I don't want to lose her. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. Anyhow, Lola is still an escapee. The fence got built, um, but she's still escaping, so we're going to have to figure something else out for that. But you know what? I'm happy that we built the fence anyway, because now it's going to keep the dogs and the kids and everybody outside of the Green Mile area. We were thinking that maybe this weekend we would get some soil and finally fill in our garden beds. Yep, now that I've got the fence around it and we can finalize where they're going to be and everything like that and we'll be able to get it going. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we would grow like pumpkins and squash and like that, um, like the late summer type of harvest, but our zone, it's so hot here. Yes, it is super hot. Maybe super, some super peppers. Hot. Maybe some peppers, peppers, yeah. peppers will work out here, I know that. Hey, if you guys have any good ideas cucumbers. for stuff that we can plant in the, uh, the desert, area yeah. we're in the northwestern arizona desert not humid really no dry very it's, very this dry. wind that we have right now is like a freaking hair dryer. hair dryer exactly it's it's horrible <laughs> we're standing out here just roasting but we're sitting out here roasting I should say. in the shade, <laughs> in the shade. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get something in the ground though because i mean they're small garden beds, um, and again, we use nothing but recycled materials. So that whole area, the chicken coop or turkey coop, green mile, whatever you want to call it, the nursery, um, the garden, future garden beds, the fencing area, everything around it has been recycled materials from things that we had that we broke down and turned it into that, and also materials that people had given us that they were like, oh, this is scrap and junk. I want it off my property. If you come get it, you can have it, and we're like, Okay, <laughs> I'll, come, I'll be right there with the truck. <laughs> so, but, uh, we're doing, um, you know what, we haven't really talked about or really gotten into a lot of the reason why we're doing a lot of the recycling stuff. And so, maybe we'll talk about that for a second. A lot of you may or may not have heard of a gentleman named Dave Ramsey. My brother got us his book for Christmas like the year before that and it sat and collected dust for a while because I had just had a baby and lots of other life excuses. And one day we were just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so we decided to crack open his book and read his method. His right. method is awesome, you guys. Seriously, I highly suggest checking into Dave Ramsey. He's a financial planner and he helps people to become debt free and not only debt free, but to be able to make their money work for them. When we started it out, it seemed like every single curveball that could possibly get thrown at us just automatically just got thrown at us. The propane getting out, we ended up losing the hot water heater and the stove in one day because we had no um, propane. Dishwasher went out. The dishwasher went out. Our refrigerator went out. Uh, the, well, our second refrigerator. Well, our second one. Our Thankfully, secondary. it wasn't our main one. It seems like when you're first getting on the plan, it seems like every anything and everything that can go wrong is going to go wrong. Murphy's Law is going to step in and it's going to try to get you discouraged off of the plan and it's going to try to like tempt you with, no, stay on the debt cycle, stay being a slave but we're so against it these days. It's not even hard for us to be like, oh, well that went out, oh well, let's find another way to get around it. Yeah. And so that's kind of like been our mantra and 
We've really wanted to start doing like our homesteading so we can like eat our own fresh chicken and to be able to harvest it ourselves. And it's just, it would be better for us and it would be a life lesson for our kids and everything to know where their food comes from. And the cost is way lower than buying it in the store and it's fresher, it's right there. So that's the whole thing. And we didn't want to put off um, getting this started and getting this going because of our debts. And so that's why we were like, you know what? We're gonna make this happen. We're gonna recycle crap. We're going to figure out a way to make this happen. And by golly, we're doing it. We're a young family oh. and we have three kids. I'm a stay at home mom. Our and work. Gary works, so we're living off the one income. If we can do it, you guys, I promise you, you can do it. We're reclaiming our life, trying to make it better. But that's basically, you know, um, why we are doing a lot of these reclaimed projects. So that way we can stay on our goal, debt freedom, because that is ultimately what means the most to us. All right, so let's show you guys how I ended up attaching this to the actual ground and securing it from the wind and everything else. And what we actually did with the fence. Yeah, I figured it'd be nicer and funner to show you guys the end product and like just step through it, step by step on what we did, than actually record what we were doing because recording what we were doing is just really boring. It's like bending metal and tying this here and there wow. and it wouldn't make for a good video. So now we're just gonna show you the end result. And um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any tips on how we could have done it better or um, if you guys think it's awesome, let us know. We wanna hear from you, drop it down in the comments. Yes, yes. All right, so let's get to it. Come look at our creation of this uh, fence. Reclaimed, reclaimed <laughs> fence. Reclaimed fence. All right, so we move these pavers. Make it a little easier for us. Kids run around barefoot all the time. So. <laughs> and that's the gate. Ended up attaching this guy. Made it bigger. Cut it, was, it. it was really a small, like narrow fence, and we wanted it to be big enough to fit right in here to be actually like the garden width. So we can get a wheelbarrow or something in here. Yep, anything that we want. And yeah. Gary had to bore this guy out because it was using a different pole, a pole that was much skinnier, yeah. like this. And, and I attached this pole. So I ended up smashing a pole in the ground, probably a good three feet roughly yep. and then I put this pole over it smashed it down a little bit and then we intertwine the uh, bailing wire and the fence right here and connecting it just wound it all the way up tied it off did it to the other side as well same concept pole hit a pole three feet into the ground put the pole in smacked it in a little bit put on some braces and then straight in tight make sure it wasn't gonna come down or move around and then we put the hose, put the right hose through here and on yep and connected it right here this uh, other wire the other hose goes to our swamp cooler and then this one right here goes to the garden area obviously and we just again he used bailing wire and we just secured it here it, it used to be up against the fence but that's not going to work for the garden because then we'd have to step over the garden to get to the hose every time that we wanted to water no so and then these poles babe where did these ones come from was this a swing set or something no this was a uh, one of the pole sets for a part of the uh, shade structure uh, like canopy oh that shed. tony gave us yeah no i just used part of it so that way we can attach it connect it <laughs> it works i screwed that in tightened it all up Got it set. I've smashed another pole down in here itself. Yep. And then he secured it and to I that. And screwed in holes and put in some bolts. And then I've got this holding to put the tension on since the actual tension holder broke off. And, and then, then we went around and wired everything. And was super chewed up and gnarly. And we did the best chewed that we up. could to make the diamonds look prettier again and just be more functional. And he went through with bailing wire and attached the tops so that way it won't come off. And he attached it in the middle as well. And then at the bottoms. So, and it's done all the way through. 
so. And then right here I put in an angle brace and I drilled it in in two spots, attached it, went around the corner, attached it up here, attached in the middle and down there as well. Just kept on going, kept on doing it. This was all, this piece was all broken and mangled in so many different ways, but it still had some of the metal there. So I folded it, molded it, and <laughs> connected and taped it together and said, okay, hold, please. <laughs> so basically that. I attached everything up here. Attached it all down there. Same thing here. It was all really mangled all the way down on this long set, uh, side of the fencing. And this part, we you can see that we don't have a pole, but and Gary see how used it's broken. Yeah, and everything it's broken like that. here. But Gary used again some bailing wire, and he put it through, the, through top the top of the chain link. Hold it up. That holds it really good, actually. And attached it up here. Went through. Did the bottom as well with bailing wire, so that way it held. Hopefully. And the dogs will try to push their way underneath in there. So far, so good. Yep. And then we did the tops. We're going around in here. And we had to do this side. Nice. Same concept there. I smashed a pole in there, screwed in some more anchors and bolts, tightened it to the actual fence right there as well. And then we tied this in to the back side of the braces, just bending it over. Attach it however we could. Bailing wired it up the pole. Use what we could, but hey, it works. Actually, it works really well. We used um, the old bricks and some railroad ties to create this garden bed, which is not full now, but hopefully by next weekend it will be. And we'll start growing some stuff. So. Pretty exciting, that's how we did our fence, you guys. We'll get rid of all the hot water. This guy was pretty darn empty. Been evaporating a lot faster these days. Yeah. yeah. What's going on, Watch, I'll put the water over there and they'll run over to it. And you're like, wait. See? We want the water, guys. <laughs> they love it. It's so cute. I try to do this one today for them. But it's so hot, you know, it evaporates in like 10 minutes. Mean old turkey. It's not as mean anymore. It's still skittish, but she's not as mean as she was. I'm gonna chop it off for him real quick. All right, last little spray, guys. So this is how we feed um, the ducks and turkey. We've got an old two liter bottle of soda we cut the back off of and cut this part off of it. And we use that as like a funnel. So we just hold that there and I just take this and I just fill it up until it's full. Okay, now it's full. So then what I do is I just take my hand and put my hand underneath it. Let it all fall back into there. And then move that. Same thing. 
So this container is like the cheese balls that you can get from Walmart. We recycled that as well. And we fill it up and um, by filling this up with the grains and the scratch and stuff, we usually get about a week's worth of feeding done because what I just did right now will last these guys probably like three days. They don't, I mean they eat a lot, but when you have continually have food down for them, they don't seem to eat as much as when you have to go in there and you're limiting them to like one scoop a day. So having this setup that Gary made for us is amazing. And the cheese ball bucket lasts us probably almost a week. So not too bad for what's it going on in there. They already ate a little bit of what they wanted and said, nope, whatever, instead of just sitting there eating, eating, eating. Mama Turkey, think, I think she's going to sit there and eat a little bit more. And then we have, um, locally here in our community, we have a community center that does like a bread ministry. It's when it's going to be thrown in the dumpster, I mean, I'm, I take it and I give them little pieces of bread for the ducks and they really enjoy it. So I take the old bread, old nasty bread, and I just take a little chunk off and I throw it in the water for them and they really like to get it. Even Gobbles gets in on some. And it's like a treat. They don't get it every day, they just get it as I get the bread, which... I throw it in the water again because it's really hard, old, nasty bread, and the ducks would rather eat it inside the water anyway. So I try to throw it inside the little pond areas and like in their water, just wherever. Gobbles, uh, Mr. and Mrs., they don't really care if it's hard or not. They'll eat it and peck at it no matter what. It doesn't have to be in the water. I'll just throw it on the floor. They'll eat it. See, they don't care. God made dirt, dirt don't hurt. Is that right, ducks? Here you go, Gobbles. Oops, there you go, guys. That's all we got. And then I got a couple of extra loaves, but this is gonna be for another day. We tarp all of our stuff, even though it has a lid, because on the random times that we do get those good rains, the lid has a leak in it and it always gets the feed wet and moldy and nasty. So to save money on feed, we always tarp it. It's very simple, very effective. And on over there, and on over here. There's actually more than I thought in there. Looked like only like four or five. But they decided to bury them. Hey baby, Thank my you. buddy's back. Your buddy is back? My buddy's back. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Our buddy, our buddy the dove. Yeah. My buddy the dove named Pidge. The dove named Pidge. The dove named Pidge. The dove named Pidge. This is my buddy Pidge. He's a dove, but we named him Pigeon. And like every time that we set him free, he comes back every few days. So I'm not gonna set him free anymore. If he wants to be in here, well then so be it. So I'm gonna let you be here. Alright, well that's it. That's everything. So that's all we got for you guys for today. I hope you guys liked how we put together that fence and um, our little Dave Ramsey discussion. Uh, but yeah, everything's going pretty good. Hopefully we'll be having some uh, dirt in there to where we can actually start seeding and planting and start getting that going itself. And get her done. Have a harvest day. Yeah, yeah, should be good. Yeah, really good. we hope you guys liked today's video. If you have any questions for us, um, maybe about like the Dave Ramsey stuff or like any of our builds or what's next. Uh, anything and everything, and, you know, whatever. We're pretty Pop open. In the comments. And as always, like, share, comment, subscribe. And yeah. if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so that way you can actually yeah. know when we pop up with new videos. Yep. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We will catch you the next time. 
Till next time. Bye. Bye.